You are all welcome to Space of Big Time. This is Doba Faladi. I'm a contemporary artist from New York, welcoming you to this show of uh, Atlanta 2019 here in Atlanta, Odyssey. Just a minute, don't rush. Wait, 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 just a minute. Wait, 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 just a minute. Don't Dova Afolabi, how would you describe your work? Oh, well, um, I've never actually uh, attributed any specific uh, notation to my work because I don't believe in all this academic uh, dispensation of what classification they give me more. But notwithstanding, I sometimes want to do something that really uh, makes sense to me, uh, appeals to my sense of aesthetics. Uh, at the end of it, I could make something like abstraction, I can make expression. I sometimes even make impressions, but in most cases, uh, most of this. Uh, at uh, critics tell me um, in between impressions and expressions but at the end of the day I don't really mind I want a successful art piece that has a lot of aesthetic ambience that's it your color scheme is unique what inspires your style oh well um, I I actually love to study nature and social elements and I was raised and brought up in a rich environment, culturally, culturally rich environment where I see colors as a black man, you know, I see colors a lot and that really gives me the fundamentals of how I imbibe inculcate all these things into my productivity and uh, that's actually the basis of my color diversification. When did the public start buying your work? Oh well, I would say a long, a long time now, a relatively long time. Uh, I, I think I had my first major sale where, while I was still in, in school, you know, some of our professors who like my work used to patronize me. They used to buy my work. And there was this particular one I did too. Uh, I call it, I think, a polo player. You know, fairly large piece that I sold to one uh, media merchant in another part of my country. And I was so happy because that very day I got the money of that piece. I was actually broke. And I was going by, if you know Nigeria, from north to south, I was going from Kaduna to Lagos, and then they have a dime. But I was paid that day, and I was so happy. That was the first time I really had a major uh, rising, a major sale of an art piece. You know. And, yeah. How many public and private pieces do you have all over the world? Can you give us a number? Huh. That's going to be very hard for me to really, uh, to really uh, say right now because I need to really sit down and start counting. You know, I know I have my works in Europe. I have some in uh, here, all over the all over the place here in the United States, and I have a couple in Nigeria. Like I told you, I used to sell my works way back then. In the late 80s to early 90s mm -hmm. in Nigeria, so I, I cannot really be point how many numbers of what I have. But there's uh, a couple of works that I know that I have in top places in banks and corporate uh, places here in the United States. Okay. Are there any of your favorite pieces that will be seen? Um June the 7th. Are there any of your favorites here with us? Yes, every piece I brought here are my favorites, but there's a particular one that uh, really uh, invites my 
uh, interest a lot. That's the piece I call uh, Wakanda Profile. Uh, this piece here. Yeah. Uh, when I painted this, this is the second time it's shown. It was shown at Noda in North Carolina. I used the profile of Mitchell Obama to, to, to make this piece. But when you look at the face, you're not really looking at something that is typical of every portrait. Mm -hmm. Because I'm trying to change the face to a mask. You know, mask in the sense that Obama, I mean, Obama family, everybody knows that they are Africans. And Mitchell Obama, to me, is African, married to an African. And not just an African, a, an African of glamour, you know, to a Kenya descent, uh, whose popularity, I mean, the popularity of where the husband comes from, is uh, renowned for their safari, you know. Mm -hmm. So you can see I changed the face to a mask right there. Mm -hmm. And something very funny is that immediately after I, I painted this, I did not even know that uh, Wakanda series or Wakanda movie is coming out. Hmm. When you look at this, all you see is the glamour coming from dark to light. Like we are moving, you know, from our past or from uh, dark to uh, to glory to glamour. So, and that's the essence of Wakanda itself because it shows a lot of futuristic. Uh, scenario of black people all over the world. How would you want people to feel about your art? Oh well, I want my work to entertain. Mm. I want my work to mesmerize. I want my work to uh, immortalize me. I want my piece to, to have this uniqueness and euphoria that people feel when they see beauty, when they see aesthetics, when they see things that would uh, normally uh, make a sense in uh, uh, accentuating the essence of humanity. Are there any other mediums that you're interested in creating through? Oh, yeah. Um, as time goes on, I probably might because if I if I didn't start like a painter, I probably might have ended up being a sculptor. Mm. Uh, I love sculpting, and uh, I was very good in sculpture too. And you can see from my style, from my works, that um, I I depict a lot of three dimensionalities of textures in my work. Uh, in the future, I might be producing a couple of uh, of sculptures too, and uh, that I don't rule out. Mm. But that's going to be when I have uh, the kind of space required for such uh, uh, undertaking. Okay. What legacy do you hope to leave behind? Oh well. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I hope I'm too young. <laughs> I'm still young to be talking about legacy. But well, it's a good question though, because yes, nobody knows when he or she might leave the world. Uh, the legacy of uh, of uh, remembrance of uh, of like people say that guy really did his best, or he had a school to humanity. And uh, fairness, uh, simplicity, you know, because I believe life should be simple, you know, and uh, uh, the legacy of beauty, you know, mm. life should be beautiful, you know, that's the way I say things. Very good. Any ongoing shows right now or any upcoming um, that we can see your work featured? Oh, well, my bio says it all. If you go to my bio on web, like financeamerica.com, you're going to read a lot about me. Even online, merely typing Yoga Falagi online. Because
because lately I show them my web because I'm trying to reload and reconstruct. But right now, as I'm talking, uh, my work is in, uh, is in custody of the uh, Department of State, United States. They're using it for US, acting US embassies abroad. It should be showing in Guinea Conakry right now as we're talking. Okay. And um, I have another solo exhibition going on in New York right now at Harlem. You know, that I call Harlem Faces. Open last month is still going on right now. Till uh, probably the end of June. And uh, I'm going to be having another one in Houston by August, which I call Visitation of the Dreams. Mm. That has a lot of, you know, uh, its own story, you know. Okay. Then, uh, normally, I always feature in Art Basel, Miami. City of Art Africa, Miami, and City of Miami too. Always use my work during Basel, Basel, Miami. That comes first week of December every year. And uh, the last year, I was the official artist of Miami City Chamber of Commerce, where I was made to perform live on stage in the gala nights. Uh, so the same thing that happened this, this year too. But I would say this, these are specific places I have shows right now. And if there's any other shows or any other engagements, I would actually uh, send it out and give updates. Very good, sir. One last question. Your motto. Can you give us one, please? Uh, my motto? Well, I would say... Uh, uh, it all depends. Uh, I would say my motto right now is the diaspora sensation because uh, it's like a lot of things uh, happen among the Africans abroad, and we are really we are really growing right now in terms of social dispensations. Uh, which is really great, which is really, really great. I like the kind of the communion, the kind of vibrations and the energy and things we're trying to put up right now in every aspect of life, mm. in education, in arts and science and everything, the news going on around us. So that's why I say, uh, uh, that's the, the diaspora. Me, for me, as a diaspora, yeah, but generally in diaspora, right? Yes. That um, I am feeling fat. Very good. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Doba Afolabi, we're glad to have you again today. Um, and you guys come out June the 7th to so come and check out more artwork like this. Can you tell us a little something about this piece? Oh, well, uh, this I call Kalakuta Ridge. Mm. You know, uh, it's one of the series I, I made mm -hmm. because uh, I love music a lot. Like I told you previously, yeah. uh, I love fellow music. Mm -hmm. you know, I grew up in, just me. I grew up it's hearing music and red fusion. My sister. Just and, uh, yeah, I've made wait, a couple wait, of pieces wait, like this. Just Actually, one of my largest, uh, wait, largest pieces wait, I made, wait. was like 12 feet or so, wow. was made on Fela's abstraction of stage. Wow. It's in uh, one United Bank of California right now. So, yeah, that's why I made this, and I have a series of works like this too in other shows. It's so colorful. Your color scheme is amazing. Thank you. I can't even Colors I'm seeing here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really, really nice. Any other inspirations that come to you when doing the album? Uh, there are definitely movements, movements, uh, then spontaneity. You know, I think jazz is inspiration and it comes in flipping moments. 
Yes. You don't need to think so far. Right. Yes. Yeah. Stay so long. Yes. For you to pick up. Keep hope alive. 